socket. All right, Lady Ada, what is this? This is a 2.1 inch 480 by 40 uh, display. We've shared this off with our Qualia ESP32 uh, RGB666 driver because this is a raw TTL display. But what's new is that uh, we now have a driver for the capacitive touch. Yay, thank you, Melissa, for writing the driver. Normally, um, these displays use a focal tech chip, but this one actually uses like a CST who knows, some other uh, manufacturer for the capacitive touch, but she did a great job doing Arduino and CircuitPython libraries. Uh, next up, we're going to get the capacitive touch working for Big Bertha here. This is the four inch diagonal screen, a really beautiful, large, um, covered with fingerprints, uh, bezeled capacitive touch. Uh, this one has a separate little tail for the cap touch, but uh, we'll make a little breakout for it and hopefully get this one up and running soon. So lots of round touches. All right, Lady Ada, what's this? This is me testing out my new rev of the 3.5 inch 480 by 320 TFT Featherwing. Um, historically, this used an STMP 610 or 811 discontinued uh, and end of line. So now it's a TSC 2007, which is also I squirts, which is nice. Add the stomach QT port. Still has the SD card reset on off. Uh, oops, forgot a pull up resistor. Uh, new boost converter for the backlight and I'm running this demo and the way the demo works is I want to test as much hardware as possible so it draws on the screen it loads an image from the SD card and then it turns on um, these little touchscreen paint uh, demo so I can verify that you know the I squared C works the TSC works the IRQ works the SD card the backlight and the display and this hardware is good I'm gonna add this resistor and send out some PCBs all right, Lady Ada, what is this? Well, I had a bunch of time yesterday thanks to having a day off. At Adafruit, we give everybody the day off, which means I can work on some hardware. This ICN6211, it's a DSI to RGB TTL converter. So on the other side here, I've got this beautiful 4-inch by uh, 720 by 720 screen. But I'm going to get it working with like these round displays that I've got, capacitive touch, bar displays. I've got here my Pi 5. Uh, I've got the cable adapter. I'm using my Pico probe to do the console debugging for the kernel hacking. I got a mouse here. And then um, this is, uh, you know, going through the DSI connector to the CTL display. And it's like a full speed um, display. And I can like use my mouse and click things and I can open up a web browser. Um, and right now what I'm working on is configuring the ICN 6211 automatically using this AT Tiny. Um, 1616 and then what I've got here is oh wait I've got here is my uh, little CP2104 to UPDI converter so there's a ton of stuff going on here hold on let me restore my graphics but what's really nice about using DSI is it's like full color 24-bit beautiful high speed much better than SPI TFT displays so um it's happening coming soon Early data, what is this? This is a Raspberry Pi Pico probe. And you see here that there's like a little U and here there's a D. This is the debug port for SWD debug. And this is a UART port. And this exposes a serial COM port that you can use to debug things like a Raspberry Pi 5. So if you want to set up your Raspberry Pi 5 and you don't want to SSH in and you want the debug output, you can connect to the little UART port here. It's a JST SH3 using um, the Pico probe and the cable that comes with it. And um, here it is in the shop. So it's 12 bucks. And it even comes with, um, you know, the cable that you need to plug it right in. So there's no soldering required. And then it shows up in, uh, like here, it shows up as a serial port, not the Scilabs one, this one, COM8. And then I just use PuTTY and I'm in and I can like edit my device tree overlay stuff. What I'm working on is trying to get uh, these cool displays working. So you need to be able to log into the Pi 5 and uh, debug some kernel stuff. But it's happening. And uh, this is a cool, handy trick if you have one of these. All right, and live to the uh, top secret. Oh, sorry, this is the top secret uh, view here. Yeah, so this is, um, I just wanted to show because this, this is kind of fun. I've been working on this. Uh, so this is the Pi 5, and what's neat is it actually has two display ports. So I'll be able to have two of these um, displays at once, and I'll just focus it in. So this is one of our nice uh, four inch square 720 by 720 displays. Um, and we also got like the round displays and the rectangular displays hopefully working soon. And this is going through our um, 
the ICN6211 dev board. I have to do a couple changes to this board, so it's not quite ready yet. Um, but uh, it connects through uh, the TTL to this chip that then converts it to be able to take uh, DSI data from the Raspberry Pi. And you know what's nice about um, the um, the DSI interface is how fast it is. So there's no tearing. Um, it's like instantaneously fast. It has the hardware acceleration um, update. So basically, you know, it uses the same core as HDMI. Um, and I don't think this has internet because I think it was using Ethernet. But uh, let me see, I can um, open up a browser. Uh, and you know, if this was working, I could catch the internet. Oh yeah, the internet is like, hey, I'm not working. Um, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I don't have. Yeah, I, don't, I did forgot to put in the password. But um, coming soon and um what you know my goal is to make it so you can connect any screen and configure it without having to compile any kernels or um do any like complicated device tree stuff that you can be able to plug in anything with the same connector just like we did for the esp32 s3 but now doing it for the raspberry pi okay so coming soon and not, not yet don't ask that's top secret <laughs> <laughs>